I once read a list of low-stress jobs. It didn't include police work. Obviously, this guy hadn't read the same list. You're back! We oui, I have returned! Well, I wasn't expecting to see you back here again. No? Well, it is a strange thing, but I am here on duty. On duty? But you're just sitting there drinking wine. No! I am not just drinking wine. I am under cover. I must be missing something. You're in uniform. Precisely, monsieur. My cover is that of an indolent, wine-guzzling police officer. You've got me convinced. Merci. But in reality, my every muscle is poised, every nerve owned. I am drawn tight, ready to pounce. Pazang! Who or what were you planning to pazang on? You must have heard, m monsieur of the terror that is gripping Paris. You mean the killings? Oh, at last, someone's taken action. <laughs> People die every day. No, no, I am on the trail of Sewer Jacques. I, uh, who? Sewer Jacques, the terror of the subterranean city. He pops up here, he pops up there. The cops, they stick in everywhere. Is he so hush or beneath the neck that then they lose it, Sir Jack? Bravo, that's very good. Merci. I was up half the night writing that. Who is this Sewer Jacques character anyway? Ah, uh, if we but knew that, we could have him in custody in an hour. But he is cunning to destroy the sewers of our fair city, he has co committed many deceptions. He has pretended to be a police officer and deluded a poor war veteran. Uh-oh. He has pretended to be a jongleur. Wow, is that the time? And an American tourist. What nationality are you, monsieur? Canadian. Well, uh, gotta go now. See ya. Well? It's not everyone who can say they started an urban myth. thought of all the people who must have sat here over the decades. All those Parisian derrieres, firm buttocks of the young ladies, the flabby flesh of the old men. That wasn't a pleasing image, so I went back to the young ladies. Whoa! A knight, there in the company of his fellows. Biblical references engraved into the tomb edge to guide his way to the next world. I guess. A statue of a knight holding a staff and a scroll. The statue had any secrets. It was concealing them pretty well. A scroll was a symbol of scholarship. I knew that much. A scholarly knight. That rang a bell. A very Spanish bell. A priest stood by the pews, energetically polishing something. Uh, excuse me, Father. Pardon? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all, monsieur. It will be my pleasure to help you. How long have you worked here? Hardly work, monsieur. This is a calling. I have been helping Father Flambert for nearly six months now. I guess you don't know much about the history of this church, then. Just a little. 
You've got quite a shine on that candlestick. Ah, oui. Anything less than best would be an insult to the Almighty. I guess so. I never thought of it like that. You must be proud to have such an incredible collection of stained glass. Pride is a sin, monsieur. But it is hard not to marvel when the light shines through them. It is a fine example of the artisan's genius. What do you know about the Knights Templar? You have come to the right place, if that is your interest. Many of them were executed in the square outside. It was a disgrace to France. Well, the Pope was right behind it, though. Clément V was a man of mammal, not of God. That's kind of forthright for a priest, isn't it? You think so? It is hard to be sure what happened. It is so long ago. What do you make of this chalice? It uh, certainly looks very old. About as old as this church, I think. There seems to be an engraving on it. Yeah? What does it say? I do not know. It is very tarnished. With your permission, uh, I could try polishing it. Uh, I promise I will be very careful. That'd be very good of you. This uh, shouldn't take very long. Feel free to look around. Okay, thanks. A stone knight lay in full stone armor, blank eyes looking at the ceiling. Carrying all that armor around must have been hard work. The lens fitted into the end of the scroll like a hand into a glove. Per disciplinum meum lux fidebus. Hey! stake, and below him a date in Roman numerals. A Knight Templar burning at the stake, and a date. Let me see. M, C, 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 X, I, V. That's 1314. Hey, thanks. It is my pleasure, monsieur. What was the writing on the chalice? It was not writing. Uh, my mistake. It was a coat of arms. The remarkable thing is that it seems very familiar. Yeah? Oui. I think I have seen it on that wool tomb in the far corner. That winged horse is quite distinctive.
Do you speak Latin? You ask this of a priest? Okay. Can you tell me what per disciplinum meum lux fidebus means? Let me see. That would be uh, by my teachings you will see the light. I think. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Did you know that the center window conceals an image of a man burning at the stake? The burning man? What, you knew? That there was a hidden image? No. But the church has a reputation for being haunted. Many times, people have claimed to have seen a burning man in the window. But when others, they look, there is nothing. Perhaps the light has to be just so for the figure to appear. Yeah, or maybe you need a special lens. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Now that my attention had been drawn to it, there was no mistake. There was no name on it. But the coat of arms was undeniably the Pegasus of the De Vasconcellos family. I'd found the last resting place of Don Carlos. My eye was drawn to the biblical references carved into the edge of the tomb. Hey, maybe these biblical references mean something. John 4, 11. That must have gone, but it must have meant something. If I examine the tomb more closely, there might be other clues to find. Psalms 22, 21. Psalms 32-7. The numbers refer to a chapter and a verse in the Bible. Corinthians 14-5. But a series of Roman numerals ran around the plaque. I made a note in case they meant something. Psalms 32-7. John 4-11. Corinthians 1-4-5. And just one more, Psalms 22, 21. I may not be perfect, but I've got a memory like a steel trap. The chalice had led me to these inscriptions, but it looked like a happy coincidence to me. After all, the de Vasconcellos arms were already on the manuscript. Nope, I was still convinced that the chalice had some significance all of its own. Hi, André. Hello, Georgie. Where have you been? Nicole said you were away. I just returned from Syria. Syria? On the trail of the Templars? It's a long story, 
But I found the bull's head. It was referred to on the manuscript, remember? Yes, uh, what is it? A secret cave built into a high cliff face. In the cave, I discovered a map bearing a phrase in Latin. In Occidenta Sita Est in Ora Mundi. The island of Britain. Lies at the edge of the world to the west. Strange. That map seems to contain a series of pointers. Like I said, it's a treasure map. Uh, that is not a good idea. While I was in Syria, I discovered a strange pagan statue. It was like a head with three bearded faces. Horrible. That sounds as if it could be Baphomet, the idol described by the Templars. The poor Knights of Christ had an idol that looked like that? Allegedly. The description of the idol came from the evidence extracted by the Inquisition. Mind you, not one statue or idol was ever found on Templar property. Until now, that is. Just last month, a statue of Baphomet was unearthed right here in Paris. Where? At the Institut Hermétique de Naval. The statue is beneath the foundation. It was discovered by some workmen while renovating the building. Can you tell me any more about the statue of Baphomet? It's a fearful image, even now. A bearded head. The base of the statue is carved with Templar symbols. One of the workmen noticed a curious stain at the base. He claimed it looked like blood. Blood? That's right. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. There was a dumpster full of debris, from the excavation, I guessed. The painter didn't seem to regard the painting as too important. Not as important as a cigarette break, anyway. Excuse me, could you help me? What is it? I've got a few questions. You're doing a fine job. Merci. I have my professional pride. I don't think I've ever seen a Galois smoke so stylishly. It's a natural talent. I'm being sarcastic. I'm being indifferent. You're very good at that as well. Merci. Vive l'indifférence. So, what are you doing here? I am having my break. Yeah, I mean, when you finish your break. <laughs> when I finish my break? An interesting concept, monsieur. You'll probably need to think about it. Mm, I could have another cigarette while I consider. Perhaps tomorrow, too? Okay, let me put things differently. What were you hired to do here? I was hired to keep the archaeological dig in the basement of this building clear of debris and to touch up damage to the door frames with my little pot of paint. It's a very responsible job, unfortunately. I'm not a very responsible person. So what do you know about the excavation? I know they won't let me in to do my job. I would complain to my union, but uh, uh, You couldn't be bothered to join. Right. Tell you what, though. I'm surprised at the sort of people interested in this uh, excavation. What's unusual about the visitors to the excavation? <laughs> None of them look like archaeologists to me. Do you know what an archaeologist looks like? Sweepy suits. Crocodile-eyed attaché cases, Rolex oyster. But no archaeologist dresses like that. Quite right, monsieur, quite right. So, who are they? Who cares as long as they pay me? What does the word Templar suggest to you? Templar? Mm. Nothing. Nothing. Be seeing you. Au revoir, monsieur. The painter had a pot of gunmetal gray primer hanging from the barrier. Hey, monsieur, 
get away from my paint pot. Okay. I should think so. Meddling with a man's paint pot. Whoa. There was a closed door with toilet scratched into the cheap veneer. That door's locked, monsieur. Hi. Ah, uh, excuse me? Oui. So, what exactly are you doing here? I'm guarding. You expect to find me sharing sheep? Take it easy. I just didn't realize you were a guard. I'd like to know what you're guarding, please. That's a secret. It wouldn't happen to be an archaeological site, would it? Are you asking me or telling me? I'm telling you. Then why ask? I had a feeling this was no normal hole in the ground. I'd like to use the washroom, but the door's locked. Oh, that's no problem. You can have the key. Thanks. The door was locked. On the wall was an automatic hand dryer. Oh boy! Dirty soap. How do they do that? Perhaps I could make a copy of the key. The key had made a clear imprint in the soap. The bar of soap had the imprint of a key in it. I knew keeping that plaster was a good idea. With the plaster and the imprint, I was on the right lines. I had filled the key's imprint in the soap with dry plaster. On the wall was an automatic hand dryer. You can't make a cast without wetting the plaster. But wet plaster alone does not make a cast. I used the dryer to speed up the process. Well, it had taken a while but I had made myself a completely unconvincing plaster key. Way too fragile to use in a lock. I'd have to substitute it for the real one. Trouble was, it looked like plaster and not metal. Then again, that plaster statue in Syria hadn't looked like stone until I'd been a bit artful with it. Maybe I could improve the key as well.
Monsieur, don't go with my keys. Hi again. What is it? Here's the keys. Thanks. Merci, monsieur. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Hey, monsieur, get away from my paint pot. Okay. I should think so. Meddling with a man's paint pot. What? Do you mind if I use the phone? Be my guest. I'm paid to guard this door. The phone can look after itself. Kula. Hello, Nico. It's me. Hi, Josh. What's happening? I'm at the excavation, but they won't let me in. Damn. We need to know what's in there. Don't worry. I've got a scheme. I'm going to need your help, though. Okay. What do you want me to do? I want you to keep somebody on the phone for a while. Who? A painter. I need to get at his pot. Oh, okay. Stay on the line. I'll go and get him. Hi, it's me again. What now? You've got a phone call. For me? Are you shut up? It's a woman. She sounded hot. What woman? She must be mistaken, monsieur. Well, she asked for that hunk of a man with the nicotine fingers and his ass hanging out of his pants. Certainly sounds like me. Stand back. It wouldn't do to keep the lady from uh, her hunk. The plaster key had soaked up the paint nicely, and now looked pretty convincing. Still felt like plaster, though. To where, monsieur? What a strange woman! She was all over me, and then suddenly... Nothing but abuse! Really? What? Abuse? Ah, well. I have a cigarette to finish. And monsieur, if she calls again, I am not available. Hi again. What is it? I need to use the, uh, the toilet again. Again? Already? I have this problem. <laughs> How technical do you want me to get? Ooh, never mind. Here's the key. The door was locked.
Now, I'd substituted the fake key for the excavation key. It looked okay, but felt false. Hi again. What is it? I couldn't give him the keys. The false key looked pretty convincing, but it felt exactly like what it was. Painted plaster. He was bound to detect it. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. I figured I'd best not bother Nico again until I'd got a good reason. A thermostat was mounted over a radiator. The radiator was pumping out heat as the thermostat was cranked right over to full. No wonder it was warm in here, even with the door open to the chill of fall. Hi again. What is it? It sure is hot in here. I have to have the door open to allow the workmen access, so why not? I turn the heat up. You could wrap up warm. I have my gloves if it gets cold, but why bother when it's warm anyway? Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. I turned the heating off. As I'd hoped, the guard put his gloves on. On the key ring was a big old key that looked like it might fit the excavation door. Hi again. What is it? I held my breath and hoped that he wouldn't notice the substitution. Here's the keys. Uh, thanks. Merci, monsieur. What do you know about the Knights Templar? There was a long pause during which the guard said nothing. Then he said, Nothing. Nothing at all? Is this a test? What, like a history pop test? No, like a test. Okay, yes, it's a test. Then I know absolutely nothing about the Templars. The guard was being amazingly evasive. It was going to take more than goodwill to get past him. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Hi, Nico. It's me again. I'd guessed. What do you want this time? What did you say to the painter? I shan't repeat it, George. Look. I need to get the guard out of the way. Could you call back and ask him to get the painter again? Okay, I'll call back soon. This looked like a good place to watch things develop. Hey, you! It's the phone! Yeah, who is it? How should I know? What am I? Your social secretary? It's not a chick, is it? Yes, it's a woman. Are you going to answer it? Does she have a warm, sensual voice like molten chocolate? Yes, yes, she has a really sexy voice. I'm not talking to her. I can see that. You're wasting time talking to me. No, you don't understand. I refuse to talk to her. You refuse? You refuse? I'm wasting valuable time. Don't make me laugh. Your time valuable? You just stand around all day. I have a highly responsible job. Ha! Don't! Ha! Me, you elephantine oaf! 
My job is important. Impossible. They would have hired somebody competent in that case. Meaning what? Instead of which they hired a dismal rent a cop like you. All epaulette and no brains. Why, you? This looked set to carry on for some time. It was too good an opportunity to miss. couldn't see anything useful to do with the planks. There was no doubt about it. It was the same sort of idol I'd seen in Syria. The vomit. The Templars had certainly been through here. Close up. The pattern didn't make any sort of sense. It fanned out around an axis point, a kind of focus to one side. Decoded by the curves of the chalice, the image of a church. I found out what the chalice was for. You served the peasant? Yeah. There was a distorted picture at the Baphomet site. When I viewed it in the polished surface of the chalice, it changed. What did it show? A picture of a church with a square tower. I guess I'd better return the chalice to the Countess. Hurry back, Georges. Hi there, Lopez. How's tricks? Senor Stobart, how pleasant to see you. You are well. Fine, thanks. Is the Countess in? She is waiting for you. I will show you up. It's okay, I know the way. Senor Stobart, I feel I owe you an apology. No, you don't. I was impolite on our first meeting. Look, Lopez, just forget about it. I came on like a snake oil merchant. I wouldn't have trusted me in your shoes. You do not understand. Finding the chalice has given my lady a new lease of life. It's a marvel. She smiles. She laughs. The tradesmen are saying that she is on Prozac. 
So the Countess feels that the curse is lifted? I would not put it so strongly. Your discovery of the chalice was proof that the Templars never abandoned the De Vasconcelos. It counts for a great deal with my lady. What's the story behind the chalice vanishing? When the Inquisition raided, in the absence of Don Carlos, it was believed that they had taken it. Naturally, they denied the charge as they denied taking the children. And naturally, nobody believed them. But they were telling the truth. The chalice was hidden from them. You don't suppose they were telling the truth about the children as well, do you? Madre de Dios! I had not thought of that. But then what happened to them? I don't know. If the Inquisition didn't take them, then who did? You must speak to my lady of these. Count on it. Catch you later, Lopez. Adios, Senor Stoba. It was just a little utility room with no exit, unless you counted the window, and I didn't. It was a small mirror hanging over the sink. The Countess de Vasconcello seemed a lot happier than the last time we met. Senor Stobar. Oh, what a pleasure. Please, sit down. Hi, Countess. The pleasure's all mine. I brought back your chalice. Why? You've had it cleaned. Yeah, I met an obliging priest with a soft cloth. Have you resolved the Templar mystery? No, not yet. I don't even know what it is I'm after. There are many stories of the knight secreting great wealth away. Whatever. All I know is that I don't want the bad guys to get it. Ah, uh, to be young and live in a world of moral absolutes. I discovered something amazing with that chalice. In Paris, I found a church where they recognized the coat of arms. I found the tomb of Don Carlos de Vasconcelos. You are sure? There can be no mistake? The coat of arms on the chalice matches the one on the tomb. Incredible. You have my most profound thanks. I must go there as soon as possible. Yeah? Well, I'd be happy to show you the city. There's something else that I discovered carved on Don Carlos's tomb. Biblical references. What are the references, Senor Stobart? Psalms 32.7, Corinthians... I am not a good enough scholar to know the Bible, chapter and verse. I meant, what are the quotations? You know, I forgot to ask the priest. There's still the mystery of the missing chess piece. I do not think that it will ever be discovered unless the fate of the children is revealed. The Inquisition were suspected of taking the chalice and the kids, right? We know now they were innocent of the first crime. What if... They did not take the children either. Then what happened to them? The Inquisition admitted to killing Don Carlos's manservant. Now, this guy had been told to protect the kids at all costs, right? That is correct. I think he hid them and the chalice when he got wind that the Inquisition was coming. With him dead and Don Carlos driven mad with grief, there was nobody left who knew the secret. You know what this means, don't you? I fear so. The children are still here somewhere. If this is so, then it is small wonder that the De Vasconcelos are cursed. I'll have a look around if that's okay. My home is your home. I shall remain here.
Hanging from the ceiling was a huge yellowed candle. It looked really old and had never been lit. Now what? There was nothing to snuff. Feeling like an idiot, I put it down again. High up in the dome were windows. I guess they might open them to make it less stuffy in there. Now what? There was nothing to snuff. Feeling like an idiot, I put it down again. High up in the dome were windows. I guess they might open them to make... The tissue was pretty charred, but the grease paint had done most of the burning. The candle had burnt brilliantly, but only for a couple of minutes, some kind of special formulation, I guess, and had yielded up this, a complex shape expertly cut in stone. I figured it was some kind of key. It was a smooth, intricately carved piece of stone that had been concealed inside the great candle. Hello again. Mind if I sit? Please. Be my guest. What do you make of this? It looks like some sort of key. Where did you get it from? It was buried inside the great candle in the mausoleum. Inside it? What have you done to it? I, uh, lit it. But it is irreplaceable. Listen, the candle was to be lit in case of Moorish attack, right? Well, it burnt down in no time and revealed this key thing. Maybe that was the real purpose of lighting the candle. What are you suggesting? That lighting the candle was the equivalent of break glass in case of emergency. 
A sentiment must not stand in the way of solving this mystery. You did the right thing. Here's the Bible from the mausoleum. Very well. Let us begin. The first reference. Psalms 32, 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. My hiding place. Don't get your hopes up too high. This might just be leading us to where we found the chalice. You are right, of course. The next. Okay. John 4, 11. John 4, 11. Here. The well is deep. The next. Uh, quick! Okay, okay. Uh... Corinthians 4, 5. Here it is. We'll bring to light the hidden things. Any more? Just one. Psalms again. 22, 21. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. The last is confusing. Lions, unicorns, what does it mean? I can't guess. Salient points seem to be a hiding place and a deep well. In no sense is the mausoleum a well, Senor Stobart. Is there a well in the grounds? I do not know. I suppose that there must have been once upon a time. Lopez is the man to ask about anything pertaining to the estate. I'll have a look around if that's okay. My home is your home. I shall remain here. Hi, Lopez. Got a minute? Certainly, senor. How can I help you? You must know just about everything that there is to know about this place. See, si, I have lived my whole life here in the service of the Divas Conchelos. Do you know of a well anywhere around here? A well? Si, senor. This used to be a fortified villa. How can you last a siege without water? Great. So where is it? How should I know? The well was covered over in the last century. It was dangerous, you see. And you have no idea where it was? None. It was hidden even before my grandfather's time. Well, you must have a vague idea of where the well is. It must have been in the old house's courtyard, so that would put it around here. Here? Okay. Now, how do we find it? There might be a way. Let me think about it. Any ideas yet? We are looking for a source of water, see? Yes. For generations, the Spanish country folk have had a secret way of locating water, even if it is meters beneath the ground. Ah, you're not talking about water dousing, are you? Eh? You know, you get a stick and walk around until the stick twitches and dig there. Oh, you've heard of it. Yeah, I think most of the planet has. Okay, let's get a stick. Uno momento! It must be a special stick. A Y of hazel. Right. Do you have any hazel trees? See, si. Here. That is hazel. I went over to find a suitable stick. I don't believe it. There wasn't a single usable Y-shaped branch on the whole damn thing.
I went over to find a suitable stick. Aha! It was a thin, supple twig of hazel. Hi, Lopez. Got a minute? Certainly, senor. How can I help you? Well, I got my divining rod. Now what? Simplicity itself, senor. Hold the wand at the upper ends of the Y. Apply a little tension with your wrists so that the slightest movement of the wand tip is clear and walk slowly and steadily over the area. Sounds easy enough. <laughs> we'll find this well in no time. Senior Stobart, you've, you've found something. This is it. This is where we find the secret of the Templars. Hidden here for hundreds of years. Lost from the sight of man until now. The mystery is revealed. It's a tin can. I've been walking up and down with a twig in my hands looking for a tin can. It had water in it. That's what the dowsing stick must have detected. I'd have to check with an archaeologist, but I don't think the Templars left that. In truth, Senor Stobart, the lawn was laid many, many years ago. This can could date back to the Napoleonic Wars. Get rid of it and I'll try it again. Lopez threw the can away. It seemed to fall an awfully long way. The splash at the end confirmed what we both suspected. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. It has been here all the time. All those years and nobody found it. Stood in awe for a moment, marveling at the secrets all around us. I could have fallen down that. The well had been lost for decades at least. The air was cool after the noon sun, but that's not what gave me goosebumps. I have a really, really bad feeling about this. It was a long way down. The brilliant midday sun shone almost directly down the shaft, and I still couldn't see the water. From a distance, the lion's head had been impressive. Close up, it was frightening. Hey, one of the fangs is a separate piece. I could hear the sound of a lot of stone moving, and I knew I was in danger. <laughs> oh, very funny, you psychos! Are you all right? It's okay, Lopez, I'm fine! Hey, susto, mia dada! You gave me a scare! Nice try, Templars. I wish that I had Leary's flashlight now. 
It was too dark to see and I had to rely on touch. It just felt like a pitted stone wall. I'd almost been killed for the sake of a red herring. I realized I could use the mirror to reflect the light from above. There, in the middle of the door, I could see some kind of socket. It looked like this wasn't quite the dead end it seemed. Now I knew what I was looking for. It only took a few moments to find it. And there it was, a worked socket, as smooth and perfect as if it had been carved only yesterday. I slid the stone key into the lock. There were buttons that turned the dials. I heard the sounds of the lock moving. Either that or the wall was going to come down on my head. Oh, yes! Uh, bonus points for that, I hope. I knew the old Stobart finger work wouldn't let me down.
Before I left, though, there was one last thing to do. You won't be needing that replacement piece anymore, Countess. I found it with the children. You'll probably want to be alone for a while. I'll be out in the garden with Lopez. George, welcome back. Come in, George. It's good to see you again. Is it? Sure. What did you find in Spain? Without Andre, we wouldn't have got this far, George. Yeah, I know. The clues led to an underground chamber at the bottom of a well. The Templars had left a tapestry showing a chessboard. The white pieces were vastly outnumbered. There was a stream running across the board, and a Templar knight on a horse. Does it mean anything to you, Andre? No, nothing. Maybe we should tell Andre what else you found, George. There's a map and a Latin inscription to the west at the edge of the world. Georges found that in a cave in Syria. Yeah, where the assassin almost killed me. Then we have got the burning of Jacques de Molay and the date, 1314. From the window of the church in Montfaucon Square, one of the few places where nobody tried to kill me. Then we have the image of a church that Georges found at the excavation. I don't recall anyone trying to kill you there either, Georges. And finally we have the tapestry in Spain. Did I mention I almost got killed there? Not yet, but I'm sure you're about to. It was only my cat-like reflexes that saved me from certain death. Cat-like reflexes, eh? And while I was risking life and limb, where were you, Andre? Getting your glasses fogged up over an Etruscan vase? That's enough, boys. Can we get back to saving the world? Of course. My apologies. He started it. Well, uh, the Latin phrase are the words of Julius Caesar. He was describing the island of Britain. Are you sure? The map didn't look much like Britain. How come Caesar described Britain as being at the edge of the world? To the Romans, the Mediterranean was the center of the universe. Britain was a remote, unfriendly place, inhabited by blue-painted savages. It hasn't changed much. Well, they stopped painting themselves blue. Except when they go to a football match. They used an extract from a plant called Woad, Isetis tinctoria. The Scots were using it until fairly recently in the wars with the English. Fairly recently? I don't recall the Scots being at war with the English. How recently are you talking about? I believe William Wallace's men used it in the 13th century. They might well have been using it as late as... Uh, you can't remember, can you? 1314. Ah, we're back onto that, are we? Andre, what is it? What do you mean? 1314 in Scotland. The Battle of Bannockburn. That would explain the stream on the chessboard. That's what a burn is. Right, Andre? As in Bannockburn? Right, George. And it gets better. Tradition has it that the Scots were helped by a shock force of, uh, well, can't you guess? Nat Templar? Yes, a group of outlawed Templars. They are said to have turned the tide for the Scots. And it all ends at a church? in the Isle of Britain, at Bannockburn, in a church. What are we waiting for? I'll call a cab. I can't go. Andre, you've been loads of hell, but... What George is trying to say is that you shouldn't feel guilty. I was? We understand you've got commitments. Oh, listen, we have to hurry. Let's go, George. We'll see it through. Oh, and, uh, don't worry about us. Pardon me. She must be deaf. Yes, my dear. Do you know what time we're due in Stirling? A quarter to six. But we're running eight minutes late. Where are you going, George? Do I need to spell it out? Don't snap at me! If you're going to take a leak, why don't you say so? Okay, I'm going to take a leak.
L E A K. Tickets, please. Oh, hi. That's a standard full price peak return. Don't you have a senior citizen's rail card? I rarely travel by train. My ticket is perfectly valid, is it not? Well, yeah, but you could have saved up to a third of the cost. I do not need to indulge in puffling thriftiness. Blimey, you're a funny old bird and no mistake. Tickets, please, sir. Here. Off to Stirling, eh? Yes, we are. Well, I hope you won't be disappointed. It's a miserable place this time of year. Still, there's plenty of pubs and a lovely view from the castle. Thank you. I don't want to worry you, but there was something familiar about that guy. Are you sure? You're tired. Perhaps you're mistaken. Hmm, maybe. But I didn't like the look in his eyes when he spoke to you. Pardon me? Yes, dear. Do you know Sterling well? Yes, I do. Is that where you two lovebirds are bound? Yeah, we... It's one of the places we thought we'd stay on our holiday. Be sure to visit the castle, won't you? Oh, I'm sure it's a neat place. But we are not really interested in history, are we, George? Uh, no. Is there a church called St. Ninian's at Sterling? Yes, there is. And I know why you're going there. You do? Of course I do. It's obvious you're in love. You're eloping, and they say romance is dead. What's the book you're reading? Oh, it's something I picked up at the station. A medieval detective story. Quite well written for that kind of thing. It's been out of print for years. What's the title of the book? The Crooked Crusader Caper by Molly Pegram. I assumed the author was a woman, but apparently not. His real name is... Professor Nigel Pigram. That's right. Do you know him? No, I never met him. Georges is a great fan of this, though. Do you know what this is? Yes, I do. A young friend of mine shook my hand with one just the other day. Yeah? Well, that's outrageous. He should be shot. Perhaps. Still, his intentions were good. I'm sorry that you've been zapped by one of these things. You shouldn't be. Does the name Merlin mean anything to you? Merlin? A master of illusions. Oh, you said Merlin? Then no, nothing. Would you believe that this clown's nose led us to being on this train tonight? I would indeed. No, honestly, it... You would? Certainly. You have an honest face. Yep. That's a nose with a history, all right. So you said. Can't you sit still, George? I need to go to the John. While you're there, check out the buffet car, George. Unthinkable though it is, I am hungry enough to eat English food. Okay. His face was blotched and unshaven. I guess he'd been traveling all night. Do you want to open that window, Paul? Why not? It's freezing out there. Hi. Having a party? No. He says, Britness, come join us, Mum. 
Who were Basha with Ogmon? Which company? His breath was like the outlet from a chemical factory. Excuse my mate, he's tucking a nap, sleeping like a bobby. I wait him up when we get to Newcastle. We passed through Newcastle half an hour ago. And I never noticed. What is that stuff you're drinking? It smells like gasoline. Really? I'll put hairs in your chest, like. And your eyeballs, too, by the looks of you. See you later. I should have known better than to leave Nico and the old lady alone. Suddenly, the sword of Bafama took second place to finding the girl I loved. Hey, buddy. Listen, I need your help. What's the matter? There's a guy on this train who's trying to kill me. Relax, man. You wouldn't try nothing with us in Basseria. We are veterans like slow action at Breitling Sea. I don't recall the British Army being involved in a conflict in anywhere called Breitling Sea. Well, you just take it from me, pal. You're in safe hands. Did you see what happened to the young woman in the next compartment? No, Paula, different have you lost her like? She's disappeared. The old lady, too. I think they're in trouble. Oh, we yeah, man, an old lady, too? Yeah. You gotta help me. Maybe they went to the toilet like? I don't think so. They never go on their own. I was in pairs, you know? No, she's been abducted, I'm sure. I've got to go look for her. What's stopping you, pal? The conductor. He's not what he seems. You want to avoid him like? That's about it, yeah. No problem. See you later. Do a do it, I go and jump. I don't intend to jump. I'm going to climb on top of the train. You're kidding, aren't you? Just watch me. Hold on now, pal. I'll get your hand, like.
my chance. You saved our lives, but why? We were always on the same side. Stobak, different causes, but a common enemy. The Knights Templar? Don't call them that. The real Templars were a noble foe. These uh, barbarians have no right to that name. These men are no better than dogs. What are the Neo Templars after? What is the Sword of Baphomet? Not what you think, my friend. It is a weapon, yes, but one which our enemies will find difficult to wield. A double-edged sword. A power older than Timole, older than Solomon. We'll stop them. You and me together, and Nico. No, George. My journey ends soon at the Garden of Paradise. You're talking in riddles. Can't you tell me straight what they're after? The sword symbolizes a colossal energy caused by the alignment of the Earth's natural power fields. Which are focused at St. Ninian's. The energy endowed the Templars with the power which made them great. A power which made them charismatic to such an extent they could control the will of all around them. How did you escape from the bull's head? It is a long walk from the cliff of the bull to the village, Stobart. Fortunately, I know the ways of the wilderness. Hmm, maybe not. Hmm, no way. May Allah guide you to our enemies. Thanks. One last thing. What? What is it? He's dead. Don't worry. I hadn't forgotten about you. And tell me this instant, Jean Stobart. I will. When I'm ready. That's not fair, George. No. You took advantage while my hands were tied. When Eklund pointed that gun at me, I thought I was going to die. I thought of all the things I'd never get to do. And kissing you was at the top of my list. George? Uh-huh? George, we've got to get off the train. Eklund could recover at any time. So what are we waiting for? What are you doing? I'm out of here. Not that dog. Do you want to end up like Flap? Not especially. What remains of him is well on his way back to London. I hope he was traveling on a return ticket. I'd feel happier if we had a gun or something. Khan gave me something. What? His handbag. Oh, great. If we run into any killers, we can give them a good buffeting. Didn't he have any weapons? You don't know the half of it. This bag's full of C4. Wow. Why didn't you say so? Boy, we'll show them now. What's C4? Plastic, Josh. We're going to shop our way to victory? Two kilos of plastic explosives. The detonator's broken now. No problem. We'll buy a box of matches somewhere. It doesn't work that way. It takes a small explosion to start the big explosion. Well, that's not much use then. What does that sign say? Apparently, during the English Civil War in the mid-17th century, this place was used as an arms dump. Yeah? What happened? Look at the state of this place, George. You work it out. Oh, stray spark? You got it. The tower was the only thing to survive the blast. I hope the explosion didn't destroy the Sword of Baphomet. Do you? I rather hope it did.
I scrabbled around in the rubble and found an old clay pipe with a broken stem. The handle turned easily and the larger wheel began to revolve. Damn! Then the handle came off in my hand. Hmm. Under one of the stones, I found a metal coin which was green with age. It was caked with soil, but what I'd found was a small cog and spindle. Now that the handle was gone, it was easy to remove the cog and spindle. I pushed the handle into the demon's mouth. The cog slipped neatly into the eye socket. With a rasp of metal on stone, I eased the second eye into place. The cogs all meshed. It began to turn. As soon as I saw the flickering torches, I realized the bogus Templars had beaten us to the sword. But where were they now? And why was it so quiet? Listen, I can definitely hear chanting. You're right. I hear it too. What do you suppose they're doing? It wouldn't surprise me if they were holding some kind of satanic sex ritual. So. What are we waiting for? Will you look at that? The vomit. Lovino was right. This place was ancient even to the Templars. This whole place? This is Baphomet? Finally, the truth. The Templars had never worshipped this graven image. No more than they'd worship a rainbow. But, like a rainbow, they regarded it as a symbol of a covenant with God who'd revealed this place to them. Rosso! Why is it double-dealing treacherous? On the contrary, Inspector Rosso has been the model of obedience, an important quality in a true Templar. Now be quiet and watch if you wish to live much longer. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here to witness the reforging of the sword that was broken. Here before God's sentinel, Baphomet. Grand Master and Knight of Baphomet, we salute and pledge our obedience to you. I salute you, Gatekeeper of the Temple. Seven centuries ago, 
our greatest weapon, the sword of Baphomet, was lost to us. Now we prepare to reforge it, to wield against new enemies. We shall lead the people to a new order, wherein all borders will dissolve. All will be united under the Red Cross of the Templars. George, we have watched your efforts to stop us with respect. But surely you realize that you have been misled by our enemies. Both of us want a better world. Fortunately, no harm has been done. We need determined, resourceful men like you. Join us, George. Join us in true brotherhood. Yeah. True? Wait. Brothers? What about Marquet? What about Pegram and Klausner? You didn't look on them as brothers. Only as failures. Three men dead and you don't give a damn! George! You know that sacrifices are necessary. Every great undertaking. Join you. I'll see you in hell first. Ah, oh, George. I had great hopes for you. C'est la guerre. Eklund. Kill him. If it isn't the great detective and his beautiful assistant, it's going to be a pleasure killing the pair of you. Josh, what are we going to do? Come on, Nico. We're leaving. You fools! You cannot escape us. Guido! Stop them. But master, the powder! That powder is from the English Civil War! You fool! He's over 300 years old! How explosive do you think it can be? I thought it was all over, but Nico had one last trick up her sleeve. Or, in her handbag to be exact, a handbag full of plastic explosives. Maybe, but this stuff is brand new! George and I hung out together in Paris. I showed him my favorite restaurants and he told me his best jokes. You know, Nico, 
This city holds so many memories for me now. The cafes, the music. The sewers. Tell me about it. The clowns. The jugglers. <laughs> and your pal Labano. Oh, yes, dear Andre. When we first met, and I was doing my detective stuff, you kind of disappeared a lot, Nico. Were you and Labano, uh... There was something happening, but nothing to do with Andre. Uh-huh. It was something from the past that I had to deal with, on my own. So, I dealt with it, and now it's over. Hey, did I ever tell you the one about the old Irish couple in the lottery? No, but I think you're going to. Okay, there's this old Irish couple. They've been married forever, like 50 years, and they win the lottery.